Assalamu alaikum. This is your host Rashid Madi. This is Islam for Mankind uh, live from Miami. Today we will touch briefly on uh, on Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessing be upon him. So before we talk about Prophet Muhammad, I would like to give a brief introduction about the prophethood. Let us glance at the history of prophethood. Let us see how this long chain of prophethood began, how it gradually unfolded and finally culminated in the prophethood of the last of the prophets, the last, the final and seal of all the prophets, Muhammad, my peace and blessing be upon him, and my peace and blessing be upon every single prophet of God. They are indeed ambassador of God. They are indeed the best of mankind to guide humanity to the path of Allah, to guide humanity from darkness to light. So the human race began from one man, Adam. Adam is our forefather. It was from him that the family of humankind began, from Adam to Eve to, uh, to all humankind. So let us listen to a Quran recitation for uh, Quran recitation Surah Al Hujurat 4913. Surah Al Hujurat 4913. <laughs> That was Quran Surah Al Hujurat 49:13, which said, O mankind, we created you, we have created you from a male and female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you with Allah is that he or she, believer that means, who has the taqwa. Meaning the taqwa is he or she is the one who is who have al-muttaqeen. Al-muttaqeen is pious. So in another word, the, the, in God's sight, because God created us, and he only looks our heart. It's not our race, it doesn't matter our race or the, where we are born or where we come from, our blood lineage or, 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 or anything of that nature. What matters, how, of a, how good of a person you are, your relationship to your creator, your relationship to your fellow human being, your relationship to the earth, because we are entrusted, we are entrusted by maintaining and preserving nature. So we should be steward of this earth. We should be the first people to care about nature, to be environmentally oriented, to care about it, because from it, God puts sustenance, and we derive our meaning from it. We drink from its water that Allah provides for us. We, 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 we breathe from the air, so we should be always be, be uh, constantly reminded not to pollute the air or not to pollute the land or, or the sea for that matter, because we are steward of this and we will be accounted for it. So as we say, the human race began from Adam and from Adam come Eve and come multitude of human beings. So history and religion agree on this point. Also scientific evidence, scientific investigation on the origin of man also show to lead to this conclusion as well. So Adam, the first man, also was appointed as the prophet of God. God revealed his religion, Islam, to him and told him to convey and communicate it to all his descendants, to all his fellow human beings. He was to teach them that God is one, the creator, the sustainer of the universe, God alone. And also God sent other prophets as well 
to remind the same thing as a reminder to humanity to teach the same so in essence all religion as the same to remind the human being of the oneness of God and to teach us how to treat our neighbor how to treat uh, how to be a better human being so let us see some of the statements of some famous uh, people that what they say about Prophet Muhammad my peace and blessing be upon him so these are impartial statement of justice and equity so the, I start with the German poet Wolfgang Goethe said I look into history for a human paradigm and found it to be in Muhammad Professor Kitzmore one of the authority in, in embryology and one of his his books are, 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 are textbooks and he's a well-known uh, well-known scientist well-known uh, embryologist and, and is a professor he uh, professor Keith Moore said in his book the developing human it is clear to me that this statement must have come to Muhammad from God or Allah because most of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later this proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God or Allah. So, Professor Kitmore, when presented with the Quran and analyzed the Quran and found within it statement of scientific nature that pertain to his field of expertise, which is embryology, and he found that knowledge so advanced and so superior in his knowledge, let's he took all his life this is his 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 specialty in, in embryology all his life he's been researching when he found that he could he was uh, he could not believe that this he he admit to the fact this cannot be coming from a human being this must have come from the creator of the heavens and the earth he know as an expert as a scientist as an embryologist that this data cannot be a, a, a mere chance this has to be this is specialized information contained in the Quran when it talks about the description of the fetus in its minute detail only the scientist with full knowledge the specialist know can verify the information and know exactly that this information which was foretold 1400 years ago at the time there was no microscope back then so this definitely uh, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad through the angel Gabriel and it is the truth the Quran is not a scientific book but indeed there is more than 6,000 scientific statements that cover all sphere of science in in its respected uh, fields and that it's in minute accuracies that prove beyond any any doubt or shadow that this Quran it's indeed a miracle in itself it's a miracle of miracles as we come to admit once we start analyzing it once we start uh, scrutinize it when we start investigating the quran and when we start reading it with open mind and open heart objectively so let us continue dr maurice bouquet which he's a, a surgeon is a french scientist and a researcher said in his book the quran and modern science a totally objective examination of the quran in the light of modern knowledge lead us to recognize the agreements between the two as has been already noted on a repeated occasion it makes us deem it quite unthinkable of a man of muhammad's time to have being the author of such statements on account of the state of knowledge in his day such considerations are part of what gives the Quranic revelation its unique place and forces the impartial the impartial scientist to admit his inability to provide an explanation which calls solely upon materialistic reasoning so here you go another statement from a, a well-known scientist a well-known surgeon a french surgeon maurice bouquet who admit to the fact that there is 
absolutely a study or comparative study between science uh, uh, proving data from science and the Quran they are compatible indeed so definitely definitely uh, it, it's beyond any doubt so let us see what others say and he present in the life and teaching of Muhammad said it is impossible for anyone who studies the life and character of the great prophet of Arabia who know how he thought and how he lived to feel anything but reverence for the mighty prophet one of the great messenger of the supreme and although in what I put to you I shall say many things which may be familiar to many yet I myself feel whenever I reread them a new way of admiration a new sense of reverence for the mighty Arabian teacher so he studied the biography of a prophet Muhammad may peace and blessing be upon him and found it to be very fascinating and found it to be full of admiration each time he reads it and reread it Dr. Gustav Weil W E I L in history of the Islamic people said Muhammad was a shining example to his people his character was pure and stainless his house his dress his food they were characterized by a rare simplicity so unpretentious was he that he would receive from his companion no special mark of reverence nor would he accept any service from his slave which he could do for himself he was accessible to all at all times he visited the sick and was full of sympathy for all unlimited was his benevolence and generosity and also was his anxious care for the welfare of the community let us see what Maurice Godelfo said Muhammad was a prophet not a theologian a fact so evident that one is low to state it the man who surrounded himself and constituted the influential elite of the primate Muslim community contented themselves with obeying the law that he had proclaimed in the name of Allah and with following his teaching and example Washington Irving said he was a fine uh, Washington Irving was a famous uh, writer who died in 1859 said the following his military triumphs awakened no pride nor vain glory as they would have done had they been affected by selfish purpose in the time of his greatest power he maintained the same simplicity of manner and appearance as in the days of his adversity so far from affecting regal state he was displeased it displeased if on entering a room any unusual testimony testimonial of respect was shown to him so here you go there is so many so many to say about Prophet Muhammad who is a prophet of mercy my peace and blessing be upon him he was so respected so by all people who are objective when they study the, the biography of Prophet Muhammad they found him to be to be the noblest of character Muhammad God stated in the Quran we did not send you Muhammad but a mercy to all mankind indeed he was a mercy so let us see some scientific comments or, or uh, miracles in the Quran or, or some scientific uh, statement of some doctors uh, Dr. TVN Persuade is a professor of anatomy professor of pediatric and child uh, and child health and professor of obstetrics 
Gynecology and Reproductive Science at the University of Manitoba, Winnipeg, Canada. There he was the chairman of the Department of Anatomy for 16 years. He is well known in his field. He is the author and editor of 22 textbooks and has published over 181 scientific papers. In 1991, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCB Grant Award from the Canadian Associ Association of Anatomics, where he was asked when he was asked about the scientific miracles in the Quran which he has researched, he stated the following. It seems to me that Muhammad was a very ordinary man. He could not read, didn't know how to write. In fact, he was an illiterate. And we are talking about 12, actually about 14 hundred years ago you have someone illiterate making profound pronouncements and statements that are amazingly accurate about scientific nature and I personally can see how this could be a mere chance there are too many accuracies and like Dr. Moore I have no difficulty in my mind that this is a divine inspiration or revelation which led him to these statements. Professor Persaud has included some Quranic verses and saying of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be and blessing be upon him, in some of his books. He has also presented these verses and saying of the Prophet Muhammad at several conferences. And the list goes on. Dr. Joe Lee Sampson is the chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, professor of stress and gynecology, and professor of molecular and human genetics at the Baylor College of Medicine, Houston, Texas, USA. Formerly, he was the professor of Obgen and the chairman of the department of Obgen at the University of Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, USA. He was also the president of the American Fertility Society. He has received many awards, including the Association of Professor of Obstetrics, Obstetrics and Gynecology Public Recognition Award in 1992. Professor Simpson studied the following two statements of the Prophet Muhammad, my peace and blessing be upon him. In every one of you, all components of your creation are collected together in your mother's womb by 40 days. If 42 nights have passed over the embryo, God sends an angel to it who shapes it and creates its hearing, vision, skin, flesh, and bones. Then he says, O Lord, is it male or female? And your Lord decide what he was. This is a prophetic hadith. That means the saying of Prophet Muhammad, my peace be upon him, which is recorded. It's narrated in Sahih Muslim. Reference is uh, 2645 2645 so this professor professor Simpson when he studied these two hadiths he come to the conclusion that definitely without any doubt this definitely is not a saying of any regular man this definitely must be a revelation from Allah. Dr. E. Marshall Johnson is a professor of anatomy and development biology at Tom and Thomas Jefferson University, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. There for 22 years he was a professor of anatomy, the chairman of development of anatomy and the director of Daniel Bog Institute. 
He was also the president of Theratology Society. He has authored more than 200 publications. In 1981, during the seventh medical conference in Daman, Professor Johnson said in the presentation of his research paper, summary the quran describes not only the development of external form but emphasize also the internal stages the stages inside the embryo of its creation and development emphasizing major events recognized by contemporary science also he said as a scientist, I can only deal with things which I can specifically see. I can understand embryology and development biology. I can understand the words that are translated to me from the Quran. As I gave the example before, if I were to transpose myself into that era, knowing what I know today, and describing things, I could not describe the things which were described. I see no evidence for the fact to refute the concept that this individual, Muhammad, had to be developing this information from some place. So I see nothing here in conflict with the concept that divine intervention was involved in what he was able to write. Meaning, definitely, this statement found in the Quran and the saying of the Prophet Muhammad, my peace and blessing be upon him certainly has to be divine has to come from a higher authority has to come from Allah the creator of the heavens and the earth the one who sent Adam the sent the one who sent Moses and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets with the same truth indeed Muhammad is the final prophet and messenger is the seal of all the prophets so let us glance at other professor and the list goes on professor gerald geringer is a course director or an associate professor of medical embryology so there is there is so many so many evidence we don't have the time to go through all of them but indeed the quran is full of miracles there is the Quran also challenge anyone who doubted to produce something like it. This is what the Quran said in 2 23 25. Uh, so let us without the without further ado look what the Quran has to say. The Quran has to say about okay, we're gonna go ahead to that reference 23 so Those Quran to Surah Al-Baqarah from 23 to 25 Quran 
2, Surah 2, Al-Baqarah, 23 to 25. وبشر الذين آمن آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار كلما رزقوا منها من تمرة رزقا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وَأْتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهًا وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ صدق الله العظيم And if you are in doubt, the translation of that verse that we just recited and we listen to its recitation state the following in English And if you are in doubt of what we have revealed, that means this Quran, to our worshipper Muhammad then produce a chapter like it and call your witnesses, supporter and helper beside God if you are truthful. And if you do not do it, and you can never do it, then fear the fire, that means the, the hellfire, whose fuel is man and stones. It has been prepared for this believer. And give good news, O Muhammad, to those who believe and do good deeds that for them are gardens in paradise in which rivers flow indeed the Quran is challenging its critics it challenging the agnostic it challenging the scientist it challenging all humanity to produce something like it if you are in doubt so indeed the Quran is a miracle of all miracles we've seen scientists in their respected field when they are when they start analyzing the Quran objectively they come to the conclusion that this Quran indeed is not from any human being it is indeed a revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth who knows the unseen who knows everything he is the creator of the heavens and the earth and there is absolutely no error in it there is absolutely no contradiction in it when we study it the more we study it we discover indeed there is miracles after miracles after miracles never ending admiration for the Quran never ending miracles into the day of judgment the Quran is full of wisdom full of miracles for the people who use their intellect for the people who use their hearing and their sight and their intellect to 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 derive meaning from it muhammad my peace and blessing be upon him who the quran was revealed to is also was foretold in the previous scriptures so anyone studying the biblical prophecies found without any doubt that the previous revelation spoke about this coming of this prophet muhammad might be upon him so let us give a brief some references and i let the audience do the research themselves so deuteronomy so i want if you have the bible open it in deuteronomy 18 18 Deuteronomy 18 18 Moses stated that God told him I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers I will put my words in his mouth and he, t he will tell them everything I command him if anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name 
I myself will call him to account. Deuteronomy 18, 18 through 19. New International Version number three. So from this biblical reference that we mentioned, we can conclude that from among the Israelites' brothers, a reference to their Ishmaelite cousins. Ishmael, the other son of Ibrahim, is an ancestor of Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessing be upon him. Also, we can underline a prophet like Moses. There were hardly any two prophets who were so much alike as Moses and Muhammad. May peace and blessing be upon him. So I let the audience do the research. And also, if you go to rashidm.blogspot.com, or you can just put Rashid M R A C H I D M attached in Google search, and it will pull up a site Islam number four mankind. Or you can go to Islam number four mankind.com, and you can also find a brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam, a very thorough book. Uh, that has uh, that has a lot of scientific uh, uh, statements in it, and it has a lot of other statements as well. So that was a, a broadcast from live from Miami, and we touch on prophethood, we touch on Prophet Muhammad, we touch on Prophet Muhammad was foretold in the Bible, and also you can just put Rashid M. Prophet Muhammad uh, Rashid M in the search Rashid M and the uh, space Prophet Muhammad in the Bible I have a presentation there a video presentation about that with a slideshow and everything so I thank you and until another episode this was Islam for mankind thank you may Allah bless you all Jazakumullah khair Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah aqulu qawli hada astaghfirullah wa atubu alayh السلام عليكم ورحمة الله